Happy Mother's Day, everyone. It really is a special day for everyone because we all know that all of our mothers are super blessed because they got to have us, right? <laughs> so they're winning to start with because they've got us as kids. So happy Mother's Day to everyone. But um, it's interesting actually pastorally this week leading up to Mother's Day and on Mother's Day weekend because it's it's such a different experience for everyone and you get the whole range and, and trying to do that, um, yeah, delicately and, and navigate through all that. It can be somewhat tricky sometimes, but um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll just give you some of the examples. So to start with, we have some of the mums, especially those, it's their first time having Mother's Day and they're just like, this is the most exciting thing ever. How cool is this? I get to be one of the mums who gets to be here. My kids spoiling me. Or, well, they don't really when they're that age. They're sort of just like, but you're like, woohoo! You can take photos of them. They don't run away. That's awesome. Um, and then there's those who have that sort of sense of anticipation. You know, maybe they're in a relationship or where they're going to get married or something. They're like, I want to be a mum soon. Or maybe they're pregnant and they're like, yes, I'm going to have a baby soon. You know, next Mother's Day I'll get to be you and my baby. Um, and maybe, you know, your kids are old enough to actually give you great gifts. And so you're like, yes, this is going to be a good Mother's Day. I know I've got something amazing happening. Or, or maybe your husband is really good at getting you really good gifts. And so equally as excited for that too. Or maybe you're seeing your mum for the first time in a long time, you know, with COVID. Or, or maybe you're seeing your kids for the first time in a long time. And so it's a really special and wonderful day. And you get to be celebrated. And, it, and it's great. You get to see a mum that's wonderful. But it's not the same for everyone. And, and, and for some mums, you know, it's, it's a day of exhaustion, maybe a bit of exasperation. And if you don't understand this, I've had a conversation with quite a few mums over the last week. And um, let me just point out something for you. Okay, let's look at Father's Day and Mother's Day. Okay, so Father's Day, Father's gifts. Father's Day gifts, they get given all the things they like. You like fishing? fine, you get to have a new fishing rod or a lure or whatever. You like golf, you can get some new golf clubs, you know, you like um, doing whatever it is that you're doing, you're going to get an appropriate gift. You know, you like whiskey, you're going to get a great bowl of whiskey. You're just going to love your Father's Day. Mum gets gifts to make her job easier. <laughs> Here's your new vacuum, Mum. Fry pans. Kettle. I've got a kettle this morning. But the thing is, <laughs> when you are a mum, you actually really appreciate that stuff because it does make your life easier. But you're kind of like, yeah, it's kind of, this is awesome. But at the same time, like, cool. Like, what does your mum do? She helps me clean my room. You're like, oh, thanks. Of all the things I do, this, this is it. This is what's special to me. Okay, I would have really liked a night away. But thanks. Okay, so, our men, like fathers on Father's Day, they get to do the things they like the most. You like golfing, go golfing with your buddies. Or even better, you get a whole special day for yourself, plus a day where you get to go golfing with your buddies. Or maybe you want to go fishing, great, go fishing, you can do that. Or you want to go have a fire and go camping, you can go do that. For mum, she gets to do less of the normal things that she does. Okay, so it's like, oh no, you don't have to put that do washing today, it's Mother's Day. You don't have to do the dishes today, it's Mother's Day. And mum sits there going, okay, great. But is anyone else going to do it? <laughs> and so the next day becomes happy unmother's day. An unhappy mother's day. Where she sits there just having to make up all the work she didn't get to do yesterday. She's just sitting there frustrated. All the things like, does anyone see what this has done around here? Or it's like, okay, we'll, we'll give you a night of cooking. Let's get takeout. Let's get something that the kids are going to go mental over and not going to be able to sleep. And by then, you know, Mother's Day is over, Mum. Can you please sort out the mental kids trying to go to sleep? They've got school tomorrow. Like, wow, happy Mother's Day to me. So there's the exhaustion and the exasperation, you know, and the single mums there sort of happy Mother's Day to myself, you know, helping go get the presents for themselves, that sort of stuff. So it can be a bit of a day like that for mothers. And that's still, in that, there's still that element of fun and relationship. That, 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 that's okay. But for others, today can be a real day of grief where you've lost your mum, or you miss your mum, or you can't be relationally close to your mum, and you're confused about, you know, how am I meant to do this relationship with my mum when that relationship is super unhealthy? Or maybe it's that there's this sense of emptiness that you would love 
to be a mum and you're not and you can't then physically or you don't have the relationship and there's that real sense of grief and sadness and maybe even there's a fear and a guilt that comes with I wish I was a better mum and it can be a really difficult thing because we want to honour people in all of those stages because the reality is no matter which one of those sort of places that you're in this weekend, God is with you there and he loves you there. Yeah. And he wants to honour you mums. And whether or not your family does a great job of it or not, he sees all the things you do and he honours you and he loves you and he blesses you. And for those who are going through grief and hardship, he's with you and he's offering you comfort. But there's even better than that. We'll look at that in a minute. We see glimpses of God's plan in family. That sense of security and belonging together, being loved unconditionally. We see that, but you know, as when I became a parent, I had plans, right? I had plans about what my family was going to be like. I knew just what kind of a parent I was going to be. You know, I was a youth pastor for many years, so I like research and like interview all the youth kids. Like any of the guys here who were like, Ash would be like, so what's it like growing up? What does your mum do good? What does your mum do not good? What would you do better? For, the, for years, I was like, okay, this is, I'm going to be the most patient mum. I'm going to be a loving mum. I'm going to bake the cookies for kindy. You know, my kids going to love spinach. Candice, everyone's going to be like coming you off and going like, how do you get your kids to love spinach that much? She's like, I get spinach. Okay, yes. Even Amanda, my mum knows what's good for me and what's not good for me. I'm like, okay, go to Amanda. <laughs> and you're like, I know what kind of a mum I'm going to be and you've got all these plans about how excellent it's going to be and how your mother's days are going to look. And then through each of the stages, you realise in different ways how unperfect you are. And it's not necessarily that your kids aren't perfect, it's that you realise how, how much you fall short. Of not even God's standard, but your own standard. <laughs> And then you look around for help and you realise no one knows what they're doing. Like you can, you can Google it and you get two completely opposing opinions on exactly what you need to do or you will damage your child for life. <laughs> you know? So uh, either way, I'm damaging my child for life. Great. But because family, good, healthy, loving family is a part of how God's plan is about how we're meant to to work, it's, it's when those relationships don't go well that they become so damaging. And so, you know, generally good parents, you know, mum guilt's a very real thing. You want to avoid, you know, doing the wrong thing because you love your children. But your experience of life is not necessarily maybe what you wanted it to be. It's not as perfect as you wish it would be. But there is good news. Whether you have an amazing family today that you are just over the moon about, or whether your family is estranged or you are the only one left or whatever it is, God's plan is good. Now we've been going through the book of Luke and we're up to a couple of verses um, where we look at the family of Jesus and what that looks like. And it's got some incredible news for all of us this morning. So if you have your Bible with you, you can turn it to Luke chapter 8, verses 19 to 21. Otherwise, the verses will be up just behind me. Now, Jesus' mother and brothers came to see him, but they were not able to get near him because of the crowd. So Jesus is there teaching. He's doing a great job of it, and there's a lot of people around. Someone told him, your mother and brothers are standing outside wanting to see you. He replied, my mother and brothers are those who hear God's word and put it into practice. We will unpack this in a minute, but first I just want to have a little laugh with you because for me this is just so typical normal thing to happen. Like Jesus is doing the best teaching, like all like people now, whether they go to church or not, generally at least will be familiar with some of these things that Jesus is saying. Like this is some of the best teaching of all time. And Jesus is like smashing it. He's just having an amazing sermon. And then his mum's like, hey, Jesus, Jesus. It's like, oh, wow, that is such a mum thing to do. You know, we know that when kids are little, it's like the other way around, where kids will interrupt you just constantly and all the time. And particularly when you do that's never going to happen to me, and they will interrupt you. And you're like, whoa, I've got to get a lock on the door. So kids will interrupt you. But then there's like a time when, like, 
like it switches over and then the parent becomes the one that interrupts the child. And you don't, it's kind of like this magical thing where it's suddenly like, can you please put the screen down, it's time for this. Hey, can you just stop that now, it's time to go to dinner. Hey guys, we've got to go now. And then it's the mum constantly interrupting the child. And you see that with uh, Jesus' mum here, like, Jesus, we just got to come see you now. And he's like, mum, I'm kind of in the middle of something. I, um, it, this is this interruption thing. It's something that you can't anticipate when or where it's going to happen, but you kind of take for granted that it happens. Um, now, my kids are now at the age where I can tell them some really embarrassing stories about myself. So I thought, you know, I would share one with you this morning because my kids know about it. But I remember, it's not that embarrassing, probably for most people. For me, I was mortified. But um, I was really young when I went to university because I skipped grade nine. So I was probably the youngest person there. So I was a little bit nervous about how it was going to go. Um, and we went and did one of those, before university starts, they'll have a night where, you know, all the students come and get to know each other. And I was like, oh, what's this going to be like? So my mum drove me to uni, <laughs> because obviously I couldn't drive at all, so <laughs> I was that kid. Um, so she brought my friend and I, and I was really nervous, but then I got, I got pretty excited, because, you know, I was out of the house, I was in university, this is so cool. And um, I realised that I knew, like, quite a few people that were there. And, you know, <laughs> as I've shared before, like, I was, you know, waiting for the one. So I didn't date or anything. So flirting is a foreign concept to me. Um, Dave even knows now, like, I, can't, I don't know how to flirt. I'm not good at it. And I also don't necessarily recognise it when it's happening either. But in this context, you think I would assume that, you know, maybe university students are going to do that. So there I was, I was sitting with my friend and I, I was really excited. And so sitting there with my friends and a bunch of guys came over like, can we sit with you? I'm like, yeah, sure, come on, have a seat, just being friendly. Um, then we got chatting all night and I'm like, yay, and um, really must have been misread that I was being, you know, flirtatious. <laughs> Not for me, but on the other side. And so I get to go, you know, my mum's here. So I get up and I'm walking to the car and then this guy's like, I'll walk you to the car. I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> you know, I didn't get it until it was like blunt, but then I got it, I was like, oh no. And I was like, okay, if you want to, but I'm gonna go now, so I might see you around. I go, like, oh, no, I'll come with you, I was like, great. I'm like, at least my mum is there. My mum's gonna see what's going on. She's gonna be like, let's go. <laughs> So I'm standing next to the car and my friend gets to go in the car and I go to open the door and the guy goes, hey, can I just chat to you for a second? I was like, no. I'm like looking at my mum like, this is your cue. Like you are the embarrassing mum. Like you always will pull me away. Come on. And I'm giving her this look and she's just like, what are you doing? And, and so this guy's like, oh, can I have your number and stuff? And I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, no. <laughs> um, but I'll see you around. And I get in the car and I just give my mum the death stare. Like, how dare you, after all this time, not do the mum thing? And she just looks at me and goes, so did you have a nice night? Because oh, oh. it is the mum thing to do. Just like pull you mid whatever and just like go, let's go. Jesus' mum is like, I'm your mum here. I get priority. Here I come. Doesn't matter what you're doing. I'm in here and I'm, and I'm ready to, to have a chat right now. This is one of the things that we can see where Jesus sort of turns on his head. Because all of the people gathered around went like, yeah, your mum's here. No matter what you're doing, you kind of got to stop and acknowledge your family comes first. They get priority over all the other relationships. Because your mum's here. But Jesus doesn't go and dropping everything and go, yeah, they get priority. He redefines who his family is. He opens up the doors to his family. And goes, yeah, family does get priority. Guess what? You're my family too. You get unlimited access to me at any time. Amen. You get to come into my presence whenever you like. Mm. That's something that family gets, and you get to be part of that too. Amen. And for those of us who, who understand, like, 
the incredible nature of that, to not have any hesitation coming before our creator God who knows us so well, who loves us so much, that's an amazing thing. Because you wouldn't hesitate calling up your mum or your dad and kind of like, hey, can I have some money? Or hey, can you babysit the kids? Or hey, whatever it is. In the same way, there needs to be no hesitation. You go on to God and go, hey, I'm having a real bad day. Hey, can you help me with this? Because we take priority because we are family. Yeah. And it's not that Jesus, don't get me wrong here, this isn't Jesus saying, like, be not a good child. We see all through the way how he honours his mum and he looks after his mum. But this is him opening up to saying, it's not, family's not just about blood. It's not who you share blood with. And we know this. We see this through adoption. We see this through, through fam, the family I chose. You know, you've got aunties and uncles of your kids or whatever who aren't actually blood related, but they may as well be siblings. Jesus says, you can be in my family, adopted with full rights of a family member. Another thing that family has is belonging. Now, look at the context of this passage. He's talking to his disciples. There are a lot of other people around too, but he's talking to his disciples. The same disciples who in a few short years may get thrown out of their blood relatives' homes, disassociated from their families because they follow Jesus. He's saying, you have a priority to me, but you need to make me your priority. And when you do, you're not going to be left out in the cold alone. You are going to be given a family. With God the Father will be very much your real father. But you also have siblings. You're going to have a family. How good is it that, you know, as a Christian, no matter where you go in the world, you know that when you walk into a church, you're going to have family there. Yeah, hallelujah. It's that real sense of, like, we have may have nothing else in common. But when we've got Jesus in common, hey, let's hang out. Because the foundational core of who we are, it aligns. We are family and it's so beautiful. So this is a challenge, but it's also an assurance. You are not alone. You matter. You have a part to play in this family. You are uniquely made to, to be a part of what goes on in this house. I'm so grateful that we're a part of this church family because, you know, especially on Mother's Day, parenting isn't easy. It, it can be quite difficult. And I was so grateful when my kids came home on Friday night from youth and they were telling me about how Andy and Beck were telling them about it doesn't matter as much what you do when you grow older. It's about who you are. And they grasped that. And I was like, I've told you that a million times, but you're willing to hear it from someone else. And it was so, so good to know that that someone else was there. It's so, so good when I'm struggling in my parenting and don't know what to do, that I know that I can call upon any number of parents out there who have done an amazing job or are going through the same thing and I can get help. I can get, you know, someone to come alongside me and go like, it's okay, you're doing a good job. This is all right. This is what you can work on. This is how I can actually help you. Jesus offers this. He opens this up to us. It is, there's something so amazing. Mm. Bless the Lord. Yeah. And lastly, this family has purpose. There, there's something about the most close-knit family. You'll see there's sort of, there's a culture to that family. And, you know, sometimes you're like, you can sort of say, like, that's the sporty family, that's the musical family, you know, that's the gaming family, that's the reading family, like, whatever it is, there's sort of like this culture where you can pick the family that someone is from because of not only just the resemblance, but sort of the way they do things. I know the Sordans, they're known as the family who has giant servings of ice cream. Right? <laughs> Like, anyone who's been around their house just knows, like, those guys eat ice cream. Like, they don't just have a bit of ice cream. Like, their small serving of ice cream is a large serving of ice cream. And I didn't realise until this last week that I wasn't the only one who knew that. But sort of everyone who's been to their house sort of knows that that's a thing that they do. That's one of their family things. And, and all these little things that come across that your family does, 
does that becomes part of your culture. There's a part of our spiritual family. There's cultural things in that too. And Jesus says, you know, if anyone who hears my words or the things that he's just been talking about, what's he been talking about? Those who are undervalued in this life, the values that have been sort of seen as as, as bad are actually good and he turns them over. You know, blessed are the poor, blessed are the persecuted, blessed are those who mourn. He's saying, you know, in this family, the blessed ones are those who, who are going through hardship. And, and he also says, you know, love. In this family, we, we love. We love beyond a measure that is able for us to do. And don't, don't read this wrong and think to be able to be in Jesus' family, we have to work our way doing what he says before he accepts us. It's the other way around. You're born into this family and then you grow up in the likeness of your father. Mm, And people will see you and they will go, you're a part of that family, aren't you? You look a lot like Jesus. There's a family resemblance that comes about when we are following Jesus, when we are part of his family. And it's a family that's open to anyone who will receive the good news that Jesus gives. That it's not about what we do. It's about who he is and what he has done for us. His great love for us and receiving that. And this Mother's Day, you know, whether you're a mum or if you have a mum, it's all of you. (laughs) You're born, you're here. This is good news for you. Because Jesus offers up his family to you. He says, come, be a part of it. Not just someone who visits the house. Not like an honorary member of the family who comes in, you know, stays for six months of the year and people sort of know you as part of them. But like adopted family. You get the rights of a family member. Mm. That you get considered in the budget. That your place in the family is taken into account and plans are made. This is what God offers us today. And it is good news. It is a good thing. And on Mother's Day, you know, mums know it's not necessarily easy for us to have that, as well as our own family. It's a wonderful thing because we need God to be raising our, our kids as well, right? Amen. Let me pray and then um, we'll finish up this morning. We'll do a Song of response. Right. Lord God, I thank you that you are with us, that your love for us is so great, that there is no barrier between us, that you see us, you know us, you know us even better than we know ourselves, you value us, you open up the doors to your home and you, you want us to be with you always. This this spiritual family, Lord God, help us to understand what that means for us personally, for each person in this room, that they will know the invitation to be part of your family is for them today. Lord, for all that comes with that, the power of your Holy Spirit being poured out on us, us growing in the likeness of you, receiving the love and the gifts that you shower upon us, let that not just be words today. Let us to walk, let us walk into that, with the fullness of that, as children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.